So you are originally Dutch, as yes. I understand, presently living here in Brussels. the center of Europe. Yes, mm. Brussels. Tell me a little bit about your, why are you here today? There is something with Well, Congo. I wonder because I really have a fever and I... I That's what <coughs> I know. I was discussing with you over the phone, shall I come or not? And then she convinced me that I should. And so here I am. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. like Giorgio, uh, and I'm also running an institution in Congo, uh, on a Congo, obviously the former Belgian colony, uh, but uh, little, or a little bit less known is that much of the, the capital that was uh, used to make that colony run and get out the resources was uh, not Belgian at all. It was uh, uh, American, it was British, and it was Dutch also. So I work on this former Unilever plantation in Congo. Uh, Unilever is a huge multinational. They produce palm oil. Uh, if you eat a, uh, a Magnum, this huge uh, candy bar ice cream, it's Unilever, it has palm oil, it has chocolate, it has many other things. And so after working for many years in Congo where I made uh, some films, I, I stumbled upon this plantation and I also, it quickly occurred to me that there is some correlation between, on the one hand, people on these plantations, you will meet somebody in a, in a minute, um, Mr. Mibale, uh, Mr. Mibale who has worked on the plantation for all of his life, 25 years, and so did his parents and grandparents. There is a correlation in one way or the other between his salary, which is $90 a month, $19 a month, 200 a year. Uh, and um, art production in London. Uh, Unilever for many years uh, has built a huge collection which is in Liverpool but over the last 15 years they sponsored a Unilever series in Tate Modern which quickly became one of the signature art events in the world. Maybe some of you remember Karsten Huller uh, made huge slides in this turbine hall in Tate Modern. Uh, Bruce Naum and Louise Bourgeois uh, they all made fantastic shows. And of course this created a fantastic momentum, not just for the emergence of Tate Modern as the most visited art museum in the world, but also for London as a whole. Uh, a fantastic investment climate with art as one of the most powerful tools to make a city attractive. So I thought there was a correlation between the complete destitution on the plantations um, uh, that in one way or the other finances the accumulation of capital, not just money, but also intellectual, artistic, or even spiritual capital, where in London. And I figured, that's wrong, isn't it? That's wrong. And, uh, and then I figured, we need to, I need to build, to build a center on the relationship between art and global inequality on this plantation in Congo. Maybe it's useful, if mm -hmm. you agree, mm -hmm that we watch this little clip which just will give you a tiny taste of what the reality of a big part of the global population looks like. Bon, je dis que c'est moi, il n'y a pas de sarre pour toucher le serment, il n'y a rien. Tu gagnes combien tu touches combien Tu gagnes combien tu touches combien Regardez moi, ici un travailleur pour moi. Il n'a rien faute de, de travail chez moi. On peut entrer On peut entrer. Mm. 
se capte. On travaillait pour la compagnie depuis longtemps, beaucoup des années. Bon, il y sont que 25 ans. 25 ans oh, Oui. Et l'huile de palme, ça va où L'huile ma foute accueille Bon, il n'est pas touché. Ça, c'est notre habitat de paye. On est à payer. Voilà, on est à payer. Total de retenue, voilà. 38, 38 000. 397 moins total de retenue 11 735 et il va rester en été payé 19 261. Ça c'est pour combien de jours 26 jours. Non, ce n'est pas pour 26 jours. Oui, c'est 26 jours. C'est 26 jours. Pour salaire de droit. Avec ça, on s'est acheté beaucoup de nourriture. Non, non, ça, ça ne suffit pas. Ça ne suffit pas. Le paquet de poisson coûte à 2500, 2000. Hein? Paquet de chicoang, 300 francs. Alors, pour un mois, il va consommer combien Alors, ça ne suffit pas. Trop insuffisant. Et avant, c'était pour unir le verre. Et actuellement, ce. Unir le verre, ils ont quitté quand Unir le verre, c'est à peine. Hein? C'est à peine qu'ils viennent de nous quitter. Euh, depuis. 2010, je pense. Et nous traitons actuellement ce ferronnier qui nous, qui nous a pris. Nous sommes maintenant sur le ferronnier. Avec Unilever, c'était mieux C'était la même chose. C'était la même chose. So, so one thing I would like to stress is that not only do these global economic inequalities make for the 7 billion in profits per year for Unilever and then also for our wealth in general because Unilever employs people, if they employ them here people easily get 2,000 or 20,000 or 200,000 euros per month in pay uh, and they're 20 euros so that's reproducing inequality of course. Um, but it also reproduces, uh, the, the, the realities you see there are also, um, um, they're also reproduced in critical artistic discourse. As I pointed out already, in a way the subsidies that guys like Mimbale give us, because every month that he doesn't receive, let's say 2,000 euros, is 1,900 80. 80 euros in <laughs> subsidy, right? So every month that he subsidizes us with 1,000, etc., euros or dollars, he also subsidizes, um, uh, uh, part of that subsidy is used to then fund critical artistic discourse by Unilever and Tate Modern. And I'm sure in one scheme, if one would delve into the, this deeper, this very conference is paid by a very similar type of inequality. There is no doubt about it. Um, so that's a real and deep problem. And I can't solve it. I can't solve it. I want to ask you, <laughs> because this arrives from this little uh, piece of film we saw here, is in 2012 you created the Center for Art and Human Activities? The Institute for Human, Institute Human Activities. Institute Human yeah. Activities. That's like the branch, and then what we're trying to do on the plantation is this research center on art and global inequality. Okay, so yeah. what's the artistic dimension here? I want to ask you about, yes. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. point, good point. 
Because we are trying to gather around this idea, the connection between human rights, arts, the role of arts. Yeah. Well, I try to point out a meta structure. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. So far. Um, yeah, we're trying to... I told you I can't solve it. And yet, of course, I try to crack my brains and many people crack their brains to solve it anyway. And the problem, the fundamental problem, apart from economic, political, racial, class issues, is if you look at it in economic terms, it's value chains. If you look at the production of chocolate, for example, um, if here is the guy on the plantation and here's the consumer, the value, and here's the, the price of the chocolate, yeah? then the price of chocolate is like this, then it, uh, it's, you know, here's a plantation and it gets on the boat in, in Congo, and then here it arrives in the port in Antwerp, and then here it comes, here a publicity campaign, here it arrives in the shops, right? And that's in the final price. Why? So here it becomes expensive, right? Here it's worth one cent, here it's three dollars or something. So why? Because in the very end of this production process, people add feelings, emotions, and marketing concepts to the chocolate. And that's where the value resides. So I figure, together with a number of other people, like Nibale, why don't we add the feelings, the emotions, and the critical thought to the chocolate in the beginning of the production process? Why not make sure that what sells the chocolate is not some happy blonde woman with beautiful teeth saying that this makes her happy and that's why you should buy it for your girlfriend? Why not add the feelings and the emotions of these people? Certainly they have feelings and some critical thoughts about the world too. And so that's one of the things we made. And it worked. maybe you should open it, it's more no fun. I've already opened it many times. <coughs> Can it break? No, it can't, it's solid. <laughs> it's 500 grams. Of chocolate? And it's a self-portrait, not of Mibale. We were forced away from his plantation at gunpoint by this Feronia company. So we moved to another, as yet undisclosed location. They didn't want people like Mibale to make 7,000% more income per gram of chocolate sold, because that's what happens now. 7,000% more, why? Because in this case, Jeremy Magiana, who's a plantation worker, because he is the one adding the feelings to the chocolate, his self-representation in a way, um, creates so much extra value. And of course, because of the little business model that we developed, we make sure all of it goes to him and none of it to anybody else. Um, yeah, so that's in this value chain thing. I'm not claiming that this is the big solution, but we're aiming to sell 10,000 of these little self-portraits by Congolese plantation workers per year, and that will fund this whole research center on art and global inequality. And that would be remarkable, no? If self-representation by plantation workers could create a huge, no, not a huge, but could create a, a, a research center in which yet other shifts in value chains, in representation, in uh, auto-determination could be financed. And I guess it's a unique moment in history. Mm -hmm. It is, as far as I know, the very first time in history that we pay for the feelings, not the labor, but the feelings of plantation workers. I don't think we've ever done that before. So here's your chance. Mm. In that sense, is there a connection between the metropolis space and what you're because I hear this idea about self-representation. That's mm. actually what we read in the newspapers since the last week. Mm. Lack of self-representation is bringing conflict to the world. So there's mm. something. And in that sense, I see that the self-representation is connected to the idea that culture, a cultural frame around people's life, an artistic frame around people's life, bring self-representation to life? Yeah, I think it's a difficult question. I think certainly 
Last night I was in uh, Amsterdam, mm -hmm. and there was this film about a 95-year-old woman who had uh, never received love from her father, who was a, a Jew who remained in the closet in Germany in the 1930s, and um, self-hate in a way, and, um, and then they never gave his little Jewish daughter the love that she needed, and then after the war she escaped her own children, she disavowed and became a fashion model, couldn't use children, the children have longed for her all of her life. What I'm trying to say is that trauma, it reproduces itself, obviously, and not just in personal relationships, uh, fathers and mothers and daughters and uh, etc., but, but societally as well. Mm. So this problem, of course, is very, very deep. Um, the fact that the Bapende, who constitute much of the workforce on these plantations, were world famous for their sculptures. They inspired Picasso and Matisse. Uh, they inspired the whole emergence of conceptual thinking about art. Not just an art piece is not about representing, it's not a window on the world, so a painting is not there to show you another reality, like a swimming pool or a, a beautiful woman or a ruin or some ancient Roman, God knows what. No, a painting is there in and of itself. It's there to, to be itself, so to speak. That's like the birth of concept conceptual art in, in, in the West. It was very much inspired by this Congolese art. Mm -hmm. When they finally revolted against forced labor because it was unpaid for Unilever in 1931, their entire leadership was killed, which makes the story of guys like Mibale then working for artistic production in Date Modern even more sour, no? Mm -hmm. So I'm, the problem is so deep and so gigantic, and we'll pay for it. Mm. And we need to pay for it. So obviously, I'm not in the business of jihadism, etc. But um, in one way or the other, we will and we need to pay for it. So the institute that you created. Yes. Before we end the conversation, would you touch a bit on the structure of that institute yeah. and the people that you work with so we get a sense of the <coughs> outreach of the place? And yes, that certainly. would be interesting, right? Yes? Um, I, I, I brought a lot more documentation material, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, we don't have the time and the space, I think. It's a, it's a, it's a palm oil plantation in, in, on this undisclosed location in Congo. Mm -hmm. and, and people, yeah, you've seen some of the images, that's what it looks like. We have a bamboo conference center. We have a conference series, which is called The Matter of Critique. Uh, so the material conditions for artistic critique. Um, uh, we have some of them, we'll have a next one in Tate Modern in London, ne er, uh, late next year. But now, so far, they're ongoing on the plantation. And we invite, obviously, everybody who's concerned, and most people concerned are plantation workers. and. Uh, we, oh we, in this case, it's me. I represent the Institute for Human Activities. I, we're, we're like three, four people. Uh, and the Congolese Plantation Workers Art League. In French, Le Cercle d'Art des Travailleurs de Plantation Congolaise. So this is this self-organized group of 12 people who, yeah, uh, we're trying to complement their knowledge with some bookkeepers because it seems a lot of money is going to come in. Uh, anytime soon, but together we finance, we structure these two organizations, this research center. Um, and a big event that we're planning is to have exactly the same artists with exactly the same works that were shown in Tate Modern on the plantation. So these slides by Karsten Huller, or the very interesting stuff made by Nauman, it needs to come to the plantation, because how can one meaningfully address uh, global inequality if all the smart renditions of it are only to be seen in the rich parts of the world. How can this talk mean anything if it's only in Beaux-Arts in Brussels? Um, so that's why we're building this center there. Mm. And of course it changes the discourse completely. Mm. If everybody in the room is hungry, it just changes what you talk about. And we need that. Mm. So another question adding up to this is um, what does this research idea bringing what's going on in London to Congo, 
what I get is a complexity of the interaction of previous history, colonial, past, and all things gathering here. Mm. What does it add to solve problems that uh, traditional, national, international aid does not add? Well, a tiny example would be that this, this sculpture was made in clay, clay out of this little tributary to the Congo. We scanned it digitally, uploaded it to some satellite, downloaded it the port of Antwerp and Amsterdam. It's full of Congolese chocolate. We reproduced it in that very chocolate, and there you go. Now, traditional, let's say, well-meaning fair trade chocolate, for example, would give people like me, Bali, a 20% markup in income. So rather than making $20 a month, he will make $24 a month, which will mean that he can buy for one of his five children malaria treatment and the four other ones not. Yeah? So that's fair trade. Here it's 7,000% more, so now all the kids can get malaria treatment. On top of that, he can buy some books or a flat screen TV anytime soon. And God knows what he wants, I don't care. It seems the best remedy against people being making poor decisions in their life is just for them to have more money. Mm. Because being very poor, it really fucks up your brain. Mm. You're all the time think. So just a tiny bit more money is the best remedy against even making poor decisions, mm. economically speaking. Mm. You know, the assumption here is that people are poor because they don't make the right decisions, right? So the best remedy for people to make right decisions for them to have more money. Mm. It's quite simple. Mm. Um, so that's something, and of course around, similarly to Unilever funding the Tate Modern series in Unilever, it creates this positive business climate uh, with companies and this and that and that around it and cappuccino bars and hotels with jacuzzis and all that. Anytime soon we're going to have it around this research center on art and global inequality on the plantation. So it's going to... No, it's not going to. It's already diversifying the local economy enormously. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's all, you know, this gentrification around Tate Modern in London, of course it reproduces inequality. All the working classes are pushed out, they have to take the bus three hours to live in like ugly suburbs. Mm -hmm. Here it's the very contrary, all kinds of people come to live now around the centre and the jacuzzi is for them. Mm. Yeah. So that's what's happening. It's a research programme on what art can do and mm -hmm. what it can be, mm -hmm. how it can challenge, divert, I think it's some kind of disobedience to the rules, but by applying the rules, mm. market economy, mm. Mm. value chains. Mm. I know you have a fever, but I have a small challenge. Do you mind? No, not at all. I wouldn't reckon. So let's say you want to address inequality in this part of the world. Mm. What would you do then? Would this institute... Here, in this part of yeah, the world? Yeah. Would this institute work here? Would that make sense? I'm not sure. I think one of the big assets, so to speak, that we have is that the economic inequality is so gigantic mm -hmm. between the $20 and even a welfare type of amount that you could get in Belgium. It is so gigantic that it's easy to make mm -hmm. a dent in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of dependent on that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be much harder here. But I'm sure many people like things Giorgio was saying, are trying to do it within the disparities here. Mm. But, um, so so I, I could not solve that problem for you. Mm. No. And last, what has the public opinions, reactions been to your project? Do you get a lot of phone calls? Do people write you? Are they curious about the problems that this art project can solve? Well, in the end, the goal is not to make, to only build this center on this particular place for the, let's say, 50,000 people that live around it. In the end, the goal is to do something that is, again, in neoliberal terms, scalable and reproducible. Mm -hmm. um, because there's no reason why, for example, the people in Niger who export uranium to France, so France runs basically on uranium that produces, what is it, um, electricity in France, mm -hmm. maybe these people in Niger could add their, 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 their inner light to that uranium and maybe they could be paid for it. Mm -hmm. 
and then they could, you know, then we wouldn't have to help them make water pumps and stuff. Mm. They'll do it themselves mm. if they need to. So I think it can, it can work in many, many different ways. And ultimately, the goal is probably to somehow redistribute these seven billion in profits that Unilever mm. makes mm. every year. So mm. building the very research center could be, I hope it can be, a lever, a lever, I don't know what the word is, mm -hmm. properly mm -hmm. uh, pronounced, for, for bigger change than just um, uh, me ballet or Jeremy buying a flat screen. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, the films, are they available somewhere? Do yeah, we buy it? yeah, yeah. So there is a website called humanactivities.org. Mm -hmm. It's terribly um, badly done. We need money. We need money. It seems to work better and better. Um, uh, we attract funding. People give me little prices uh, because I do this. So mm -hmm. it starts to work. But uh, mm -hmm. if somebody has a, a big grant, please give it to me. Mm -hmm. um, so we can make the website better. But already, without anything, we have press. CNN wrote about it. Arte made a, made a little story about it. So we sold 2,500. We're working on a big campaign to sell many of them and raise the price. Mm. They need to be more expensive, I think. Okay. Yeah. So it ultimately, we want to change the story. Wonderful. So allow yourself, ladies and gentlemen, to bring ideas to yes, please. Renzo. Maybe yeah. do some crowdfunding together with this crowd. I imagine they would be ready to do that. Yes. It I was a a wonderful uh, presentation. Thank you so much. Very interesting. So and much. I wish you the very good luck. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.